Hey guys, we're going to talk about, um, what was Wiza, but SCTX, SXTC was pretty funny just because turns out Zach Morris is back, pump the stocks. Um, I didn't even know he was on KVL yesterday, but, uh, um, which might've been a good thing because, um, uh, I didn't trade it. You know, usually I don't, I don't trade these up halty stocks, right? These stocks do these random up halts and, um, because you never know if it's going to do something like KVL, if it's going to do something like SXTC, right? So, uh, but somebody in my Discord room mentioned this, mentioned Zach Morris, um, and there's a couple of interesting things about this. A, I was extremely surprised how huge the gap was. It was a massive gap. <laughs> I was like, and the gap wasn't really on a lot of volume, right? Um, and the only thing that I thought of watching this thing, I was like, man, I'll look for some type of short signal, but, um, you know, this is just one of those things where they're, you know, if Zach Morris tweets something, every retail long trader is going to want to be in it. And I'm just thinking about how they're positioning themselves, right? Like, what is um, what do they think is going to happen, right? Because it, it gaps up like 90%. It starts trading a bunch of volume, um, which normally it w would put me off to trading. You know, I, I usually don't like guessing high day clear outs on high volume stocks because they tend to trap and, um, and squeeze and that type of thing. But then I just thought, man... Um, a, there were like no bids on the book on this thing, and B, I just thought Zach Morris pump is gonna fade. That's really what I thought. <laughs> I thought all these people are gonna chase this. Um, it's gonna give some type of weak pattern. Um, I wasn't anticipating the high day clear out, but once I saw the pullback, um, we could just go to the bids super quick. As you say, here's the high day clear out, fills up, fills this huge ask, filling big ask at key levels. Um, with no bid follow-up is, is definitely uh, a bearish signal, especially if you have a reason to be bearish. And then I um, I shorted this bounce. Once this bounce just started going nowhere, um, you know, I was just kind of uh, uh, banking on uh, the lack of bid structure fading. Uh, the bounce was really interesting. This was actually a much, like, cleaner short that if you missed the first short... Um, so we had some fake VWAP resistance here, and it squeezes VWAP. I, I usually like to see VWAP get rejected and squeeze, um, just because I know that shorts on the backside like to hit VWAP resistance. So I just because I know shorts like to do that, I mo in the vast majority of cases don't like to short in the VWAP. Um, squeezes VWAP, and I just had my risk up here at like 310, um, and they did a nice little trick that we talked about before where they stacked the ask. Um, you know, you get your initial VWAP squeeze, you wait for the pullback, you wait for the consolidation. You know, I usually don't just like guessing, you know, because ask are getting filled here, asking filled, asking filled, but I always like to wait for a pullback and a structure, right? I always think that the second push after the initial squeeze, in this case, it's just a VWAP squeeze, is much more interesting. You can often make cleaner reads on this type of move, right? Um... And this is exactly what I mean, where um, they kind of have this 285 level, this ask holding this down, and then a new ask. So we have multiple layers of ask coming in, holding it down. We get a bid for initiation. It fills those ask, and then they pull the bid. The classic pulling the bid on the push. And we've seen this. We'll talk about um, we'll talk about Wiza. <laughs> we'll talk about Wiza. Let me pull up my Wiza chart. Um, I actually went long on Wiza in the morning and then cut it relatively quickly. I, I, it, um, it worked, but then it came back down to my average and I cut it. So, let's see. This is Wiza. Here's my Wiza chart. Um, if you're wondering, I use MS Paint to draw on my chart. <laughs> That's how old I am. I use MS Paint. Um, but we'll talk about There's so many interesting games on this. Um, so recent reverse split pump, which I usually consider to be, uh, I usually consider to be quite bearish because a lot of reverse split pumps don't really go anywhere. Um, but you know, I'm always paying attention to the volume. Like I said, volume first. This had crazy volume. You know, I thought this move was going to happen here. That's what I thought when I saw this volume and I saw the bid support on this thing. I'm like, they're just going to rip this, um, and they did. Just they ripped it a lot later on me. Uh, but what they did here is they stalled it right under. So 310 was painted in the pre-market. 
They stalled right under 310. They pulled it down and they put like a 100,000 share bid down here. To, or it was like 75K, 100K to push it up. Once I saw the bid was holding, I just I just longed. I sold into the first push. Um, and then they moved the bid up. And then I thought to myself, oh, hopefully that bid just keeps holding and it keeps pushing. But if that bid cracks, uh, we'll see that there is... Um, very little bid support under that bid so there's so many interesting things on the book with this thing and i missed all the longs i missed the longs because i thought it was getting too extended and they wouldn't work um by the way so here's this like hundred thousand share bid they pushed it up they followed up the hundred thousand share bid but then they had these ask pushing it down and this is where I got out on this crack. So it cracked this 100k bid down here. But we've seen huge bids become relevant later. We've seen these massive bids that get filled be bullish later, right? Um, and this was an interesting one. This this is exactly how low float stocks move. Um, where, uh, what do you call it? Um, let's go to uh, Wiza. Going early in the move. So first of all, whoops times it sales um massive volume right massive squeeze we're talking you know two million shares a minute and then you got huge down only right these quick dumps right these manipulate now i thought um uh possibly it would rotate we see these quick dumps at a one minute 50 rotate um but i just uh stopped myself out i wanted to wait to see what this test looked like and it broke straight through it so now we got this big down only pullback. See, very, very, on these high volume, low float names, there's a lot of potential for it to, to, divert, to reverse and push back up. Now we get an aggressive push. And a lot of times these aggressive pushes can be quite weak. It's clearing through previous um, um, lower highs. Uh, but I thought it was kind of far away from high day. You know, I didn't want to get short, like 310, have high day be at like three. 38 i just thought it was a little bit far away um but as you see this is exactly this is exactly what i mean so you get like some aggressive move so let's say their intent is to break high day you get an aggressive move you get a long trap right it pulls back to the one minute 50 long trap knife right um so even if they're going to push it past high day They'll shake out longs, right? Usually swipe some support levels like this bottom at 296. VWAPs down here. You know, they give a big knife. And then this is where it becomes really interesting. And this was like my first big, big miss. This is like, like because I, I decided not to take this short, um, I could have went long. I could have been easily positioned to go long here. And what do you call it? Um, and here it is. Here's the bid ass structure, right? So anytime you get a potential long trap on a stock trading millions of shares per minute, especially in low float land, um, you know, th these are the types of moves you have to read, right? And, you know, I thought, okay, this move is kind of up only, super aggressive. Maybe it's, um, maybe I should pay attention to other things more so than this. Uh, and I forgot what I was paying attention to at this time. Might have been PRSO which I also traded on the long side, um, it, which did work. That was very interesting. I just don't have time in this video to go over it. Um, but yeah, massive bid structure, empty ask, super aggressive move, right? And I saw this pushing. I'm like, oh man, I, t I missed the long. And this is one of those things where it's like, well, how do you know this isn't a long trap, right? This push, right? This is an aggressive move towards highs. Why not try to short this? And my main concern with that is I just know you know, because there's people in my room who would take that short, right? And and probably took this and got squeezed on this candle. Um, and I just know from experience that when you have a big long trap candle like this, right? And they and they and they have this type of volume and they have this bid structure and you get a rotation. Anytime you have a long trap candle that makes a painted lower high, below high day, and it starts to reclaim that long trap candle, the odds of this pushing is really high, right? Because it kind of shows their intent to squeeze the stock, right? This is such a bearish, I mean, look at this. It's such an overly bearish candle that with the book and with the ass structure, um, 
it makes me think this rotation is really strong, but at the same time, I don't want to chase up here because I don't know what's going to happen. There actually didn't really look like there's a lot of bids following this up, so I can actually see why, just from a book perspective, right, when it did this push here, right? Not a whole lot of bids following this up. In fact, they were pulling some of these lower bids down here, so there is bearish book map reads you can make on this for sure, but... It was the volume and this long trap that put me off it, right? So I really, I'm really looking at the volume and the structure first and then the book second, right? Because um, otherwise you can have, um, um, what do you call it? You can, you can have, uh, uh, um, you can let the book over influence your entries, right? So um, big crazy move. Again, on these strong ones, I'm usually not guessing high day clear outs like this. I'm not shorting this, I'm not shorting this, and then we just get lower highs, we get lower highs, we get lower highs. What does that mean? We get a walk down, a walk down to the 1 minute 50. Um, and now I actually thought, okay, this is another up only crazy squeeze. Maybe we'll get some type of 3.5, because 3.5 is pretty painted here. It'll swipe 3.5 and pull. But this is one of those things where um, I just looked at the book and I'm looking at the tape and I just see a tons and tons of buying. And I just see ass getting absolutely um, in through with some mini bids, like especially this bid. So it swiped 3.5. This bid came in. I was like, okay, let me wait for a second push. And the second, it just went straight up. Just went straight up. <laughs> so this is a lot, a lot of times moves like this. Um, you know, there's times where you have to make a decision right away. Um, I thought this was a situation I could wait. And a lot of times waiting helps. Waiting helps. Waiting for what? Like, wait for a major level to get cleared out, um, unless it's crazy painted. In this case, it was decently painted. Uh, I can see why you'd want to insta short in the, in the 3.5 here. Um, but especially in these higher volume ones where bids can come in, you get pullbacks with bid follow-up. Um, uh, sometimes it's nice to wait for the second push. You know, it saves you sometimes. It does save you sometimes. So, um, anyway, um, again, just... And tons and tons. one minute nine up only crazy suit like no reason to make any shorts on this push it's it's trading it's making new highs every single candle it's trading tons of volume the one minute it's it's above the one minute nine this is what this is what pure momo looks like right and then we get the same exact trap where um the long trap candle the same long trap candle that happened before and i did i saw this this is one i actually did see but I just thought to myself, it's so extended, there's no way this one pushes. I was just like, there's no way. Like, I don't want to short it because I don't want to chase down here, right? You never you never chase the bottom along. And also, I wasn't going to short this candle because it didn't even break 4.4, which is what this lower high was, right? I just thought it wasn't even a, you know, it wasn't even a good level to short, um, even though it did have this consolidation, right? This little consolidation right here. Um but yeah, I mean, look at this, man. They did the same. By the way, like, this is that walk down to the one. See, the lower high walk down, tons of bids. And then this is the short trap at four. I mean, yeah, knife in the bids. The knife into the bids, right? And I'm pretty convinced, I, I tell people in my Discord this a lot, that I think on SSR stocks, these types of short trap manipulations can be really strong right these type these types of quick dumps quick pullbacks um that catch people off guard can be extra strong on ssr stocks because people just tend to be positioned um a lot lower right especially when they're chasing right yeah you could tell i mean this was i saw these bids i saw how empty the book was i saw the potential you know the long trap that turns into a short trap right painted lower highs lower high lower high high day um, I just didn't believe it, and this thing just started ripping and traded tons and tons of volume, right? So, um, and then if you look at the book, if you really zoom out, there's a lot of ass down here, but once we broke five, the book was just empty. We just had an empty book above. We have some people at six, but the book was above five, was super empty, and I just thought to myself, man, this thing could absolutely rip, right? Um, again, uh, this is here's another reason, like right here. This is a high day. This is a 5.7 high day clear out. 
and they just ripped it all the way up the the eight fit eight sixty right. That's I never take these. I ne uh, yeah I never ever ever take these candles here, right? These candles never take it. And then like just one mid nine one mid twenty straight up. Um, and then we'll talk about the long trap move, the, the classic low long trap move. Um, now I shorted this. This was way too early, but I liked the book signal. Um, I should have been paying more attention to the time frame because, again, like a lot of the best long traps happened. You know, this was two and a half hours after um, high day, right? Sometimes it takes two and a half hours. You know, usually I say 45 minutes, an hour and a half is kind of sweet point. Um, I thought this could have been it. You know, A, I was, I was, I was being careful. Um, you know, you always want to make a read on the book, right? I was like, okay, if they swipe 7.5, I'm going to make a book read to see if there's any bids following it up and um, what the structure leading up to the move. Because like, you can see the, you know, there's like painted higher lows. It's about an hour and a half after high day. Painted 7.5 level. So you could totally make the, the bearish thesis here. And then we got the aggressive initiation. I was like, oh man, this is just going to... Um, so because I shorted this, I actually put my risk at 7.5, which is why I got stopped out here. Um, because of well, a, a potential bullish factor in this is the fact that high days at 8.6 and I'm shorting in the 7.4s. Uh, the only reason I made an exception here of shorting this low was because I learned that the more extended a ticker gets, especially once you start getting like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of percent, um, it can be worth it to... Um, kind of make adjustments to the, the, the how much empty space is in between the lower highs and high day, right? There's certain times where, you know, a stock has run 500%. Um, it gives like a long trap move like this that, you know, is more than 10% away from high day, which usually I would avoid. But then it leads to a massive, you know, 50% fade or something like that. In February, I was missing a lot of plays like that because... Um, I wasn't making adjustments to how extended the ticker was getting. So if we go to this 1242 candle, um, like I look at the bid follow up on this. This was like an amazing, like imagine you had to read on this long trap here. Look at the bids, 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 bids all the way to the up haul. Like, like and seventy percent up only with bids, like it's with tons of volume, like just amazing. Um, anyways, I'm really not trying to make reads too close to high a day here, so why I'm not really trying to short this. Um, but you can definitely see the bids start to thin out, right? That's why you start getting this crazy volatility. Um, so this is that twelve forty two push. I like that it was breaking these lower highs. I like that. I like one of the previous, you know, and I liked how there was a lower high with a massive walk down and then at a super ultra aggressive initiation. I like that. And here's that signal. This is actually that same signal from SS SXTC where they had bids pushing it up, but once they got to the 7.5 level, they were filling that 7.5 ask and then they started removing the bids, right? All the bids that were responsible for this aggressive push, this aggressive initiation were getting pulled. And I saw that and I went in short up here, right? So I went short. I saw, I saw this big get pulled. I, I, I was like, I'm going to get in right here. Um, just because of how aggressive this move is. Cleared out some lower highs. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to keep my wrist pretty tight. Um, I'll cover some near the 1 minute 50, which was down here. That's why I made a cover down here. Um, I didn't make any covers down here. And then it started the midday soak pattern. And this is where I should have known. I was like, you know what? You know, I always say you have to wait. This is kind of like not long enough. Like, like, which is why when I saw this initiation, I was actually ready to get stopped out and go back in, right? And it just never hit my risk. But what does that do? If this doesn't hit your risk, that's another lower high. That makes 7.5, 7.5. So that's three lower highs, you know, all right next to each other. And then what do we have down here? Painted higher lows, right? Clear trend line. Higher low, higher low. 6.5 def heavily defended. Higher low, higher low. And then we get another initiation, right? And this initiation um, was perfect. I just got stopped out and I didn't react fast enough. And I had to I had to chase lower because what they did <laughs> what they did was pretty funny. They threw up everyone in my room saw this. They threw up a sixty thousand share bid to force this move. 
But look what they did. Every single ask got filled. Ask, ask, ask. And 7.5 being the main level, of course, right? Uh, the painted level. So all they had, they had a bunch of ass stack from seven, the seven point you know four, filled up, did a pullback, and then did the big seven point five initially. Like look how aggressive this is. That's why this jump is so instantaneous. It's just because of how many um stop losses were there, and then we zoom way far out. No bids falling up. The classic backside, um, the backside clear out of the painted level on an extended stock. Right. So um. Yeah, I mean, I should have. I there was some time right here to get in into 7.5s, high 7.5s. New ass came in. You got to be super fast. New ass came in because you know this ass comes in like this, like it comes in, and then you you have like this much. Time, you, you just got to make a choice. Either you, you short right away, or you short this. Um, then actually, that bid was still there, and they had follow up bids. So I actually thought maybe they were going to do some crazy manipulated rotation. And that's why in my room I was like, uh-oh, I saw this thing and I wasn't short yet. Um, I got stopped out and I didn't hit this. So I was like, oh, maybe that's a good thing. But then this came back and then the ass started to show up. And once these ass started to show up um, and it started rejecting, this is where I started to go short. Um, just not, a, you know, it's not the best average. So you had to... Uh, you know, use less size, but I did like a. They pulled the 60k bidder. I thought that was bearish, and the um. Sorry, sneeze. Um, and the pain lower highs, right? So pain lower highs, new ask following the stock down, right? Um, bids getting pulled, and that's why we got a nice little afternoon fade on it. I covered um, into the one minute 200. I covered a little bit lower. It's doing manipulated backside stuff. <laughs> it's actually, <laughs> the bidder came back. The bidder came back. Um, yeah, a lot of these stocks don't go straight down into the close. Uh, sometimes they do. Um, but something this manipulated with this much volume, like, like for the most part, like sometimes you do get lucky and it just lower highs all the way down to like, four dollars into the close but what what happens a lot is when you get this much lower highs like look long trap move into an hour straight of down only selling like you're talking 7.8 to 5.2 right 30 percent fade you're going to get backside action like this right you're going to get you're going to get backside aggressive initiation taking out these lower highs, shaking out backside shorts. The more selling that happens, the more likely something like this is also to happen. Um, but yeah, um, so who knows? Uh, that's why I was, I was covering into, um, you know, into key levels and into rotations, right? I covered here, I covered some here. When this started, like, when this, essentially when this lower trend line started getting broken, um, you know, I just took some off. Took some off down here. It's also my average is seven and not seven point, you know, five, seven point six, seven point seven. So it's not the best average. Um, but yeah, classic, you know, classic long trap stuff, right? If you see long trap candles that make a, a, another painted lower high, pay attention to the bids on these pullbacks, especially when it's hyper aggressive hyper aggressive dump in the massive bids that ends up being what what the long is right same with this same with this right they just repeated i, I couldn't believe i you know i wasn't looking at this i could not believe this one worked not only did this one work this one had the most extension <laughs> this one had the most up only extend this was actually the best of the bunch and i just didn't believe it um so anyway that's it for today thank you zach morris for the short and uh and uh, yeah, reverse split pump. You know, you can have a thesis that it's going to be weak, but if the volume and the bids tell you something else, then you know, um, then you got to change your uh, change your mind. So, anyways, that's it for today. Have a good one, guys.